Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Sometimes the biggest tell on what's a movie prop versus what's a real object can come down to something like weathering. So in this video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite tricks on how to give the look of multiple layers of chipped paint. So let's get to it. To get started, I've printed, UV resin smoothed, and primed my 3D printed parts, which I was sent by fellow maker Big Fred's Customs. Then it was time to give them all a metallic paint job with my airbrush and a bit of all-clad chrome. This will be the first layer in our multi-layered paint chipping effect. I've worked up this bullseye diagram to help you visualize the process a bit easier, with our metallic as the first layer, followed by a dark brown, then our top coat of beige before applying a wash for that added touch of grime. With all of our parts painted, it's time to start masking off our chipped areas with a bit of toothpaste. Yep, you heard me right. I'm using a gel toothpaste, but you can use any kind as long as it doesn't have any abrasives. With a small paintbrush in hand, it's time to hit any edges or areas where you'd assume there would be wear. I find that thicker application makes these areas easier to find when it's time to wipe it away to expose our metallic base layer of paint. And when I was happy with my toothpaste application, it was time to test my masking and lay down my second paint color. I went with a darker brown than my top color will be to help give the look that this blaster has been painted and repainted after years of use. And when all of my parts had good coverage, I used my trusty hairdryer to help speed up the drying process so that I could get to the first reveal of our paint chipping effect. Because the masking is toothpaste, I grabbed a spray bottle of water and gave the parts a quick spritz to help remove any of the toothpaste and expose the metal paint below. This can be done with a toothbrush, a q-tip, or even your fingers. You just want to make sure that you remove as much of the paste as possible before you set it aside to dry. When my blaster was dry, it was time to apply the second layer masking. For this layer, you want to go just beyond the perimeter of your first layer to ensure that your first color shows through your top color. You'll want to make sure that most of your metallic layer is covered as well, although I found that having a bit of the top color directly on top of the metallic gave some good variety to my chipping effect. Now that the second pass of masking is applied, I can lay down my top color and allow it to dry. Because this is the third layer of paint, it's crucial that you give it sufficient time to dry to allow for complete adhesion to the lower layers of paint. Now I wasn't patient, and in the end I had soft, lumpy paint that left me with a less than desirable chipping effect and overall finish on one side of the blaster. So don't be like me and be patient. After the paint has had time to fully dry, it's time once again to remove the toothpaste masking and expose our second layer chipping. This was the part that got really exciting. You could see the layering as the toothpaste was wiped away, and it really gives an aged appearance to the piece. Once all the masking was removed, I once again set it out to dry and then did a quick assembly of the hand grip and magazine clip and then it was time to apply a brown wash. For this I'm switching from oil paints, which can often remove metallic paints, and instead opted for a dark brown antiquing wax. I liberally apply the wax across the entire piece with a trimmed down chip brush before using a rag to remove the excess. If you find that it's gotten into hard to reach places, 
Use a small brush to help spread out the paint until you're happy with how it looks. One of the things I like about this antiquing wax is that it's water activated and with a damp rag or a quick shot from my spray bottle, I can work the wax into any smaller recesses or wipe away in areas where the wax has started to dry. And when I was happy with the overall appearance, it was time to set it aside to dry. Now, while this isn't the only method you could use to achieve this effect, hopefully it'll take your next project from here to a galaxy far, far away, or at least a few decades in the past. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.